These weren't created in any 3D software. These were created with two programs, Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Firefly. Over the last year, we've seen AI do incredible things, but now Adobe has released Firefly version three, where it has exponentially blown everyone else out of the water, in my opinion. You may think that the whole thing was generated in AI, but would it surprise you to tell you that it wasn't? In fact, I created this letter A here to try and prove this this concept. This is a funky, bold A that I was working on. And I wanted to see if I could make it 3D without touching 3D software. So I used this A that I created to create this in AI, which sounds weird because we're so used to the idea of AI making everything. So in today's video brought to you by Skillshare, I'm going to show you how I actually made this from start to finish. So I first of all sketched out this A in my sketchbook here because I wanted something a bit funky, a bit fat, a bit friendly to create a 3D model with. And all I did was I screenshot it. Now if I head to Adobe Firefly, I can ask it to create anything. But I want to create some sort of texture with this, some sort of material that I can work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a prompt and I'm terrible with prompts. So bear with me. Green slime ball, studio lighting, white background, highly detailed. Let's see what we get with this. Okay, we get this and you can automatically see that AI is working well here, but there's a few problems. It isn't exactly what I want. None of this is real. I know it's how good the hand is now. That's actually really wild. In fact, I'm going to go down here and go to hyper realistic. I'm going to change that to detailed and we'll generate again. So this is more like the shape, the substance that I want, but I think it's a bit too detailed. So I'm going to just get rid of this and go back and see what happens when we create it without. This one here is my favorite so far. And if we click this, you can see the detail in it. It's got enough bubbles. It looks like a green slime ball. And I'm going to simply just download this if I wanted to. But I can also press edit. I'm going to use this as a style reference. And what that does is it shoves it over here in Adobe Firefly. The style reference gives Firefly, the AI, the context of what you want as like the style of it. But we have another thing up here called structure, and this is where it gets crazy. In here, I can add my own images, such as that A. In fact, I'm gonna just drag and drop that A into there, and I'm gonna increase the strength and decrease the visual intensity of the structure. And with the same prompt, I'm gonna press generate. And just like that, it has created four pretty good versions of this idea that we've created from that. What AI has done is it's taken the prompt, it's taken the structure of how it should be structured, and then the reference and mashed it all together in a really easy way. I mean, look at the detail on this. This does not look like it has been made purely in AI. And the crazy thing I can do is I can actually add another image in here, which is this fluffy ball that I asked AI to create as well. And I'll put in the prompt here too of a fluffy green ball with a detailed texture on a white background. Let's generate it and see what we get. And that to me is like incredible. How realistic does that fur look? That to me is amazing. Now, what if I was putting this cushion in as well, this material, which is a soft inflatable cushion with wrinkles on a white background? And you can see here how it's created it. So where it actually moves or where the tight points are is where the creases are as well. Look at how crazy that is. What if I was to say orange? It looks more like a sleeping bag now, but you can see it's got some tight bits there. It doesn't look as good as the black one. What if I was to change the lighting to studio lighting and macro photography and change it back to black? I mean, that looks incredible. It's got a bit of tilt shift to it, so it looks like it's in macro photography mode. The detail is astounding. Now, what you see me do there is use my design work and AI 
together, like a tool, working together, one hasn't replaced me. What it has done is it's meant that I have not had to learn another program like Blender or Cinema 4D. Obviously, I don't have the control that I would have if I was to create this material inside of Blender. I've literally just imagined this sort of thing up and it has worked. That's all well and good, but what do we do next? What is the next part of this to make this really stand out? Because right now, it's a good image, but it's not very high quality. Well, before I show you, I just want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video because I have a course, a logo design course that you can take over at Skillshare. It's called generating iconic logo design ideas. The biggest problem that designers have, including myself back in the day, was generating ideas. I felt pressured. I felt like everything I was making was terrible until I came up with a system that meant that I could create ideas fluidly without any pressure. And not only can you view my class, you can view other classes from Aaron Draplin, Jeremy Moore, Ali Abdal. You can learn a new skill like animating and procreate dreams like I've been doing. You could even learn to take better photographs, learn to paint, and all these classes are taught by real creative professionals. So go ahead, click the link down below, check out that course if you want to get into logo design and learn how to create amazing logo design ideas. What we need to do now is actually upscale our work. Upscaling is where we take an image of low quality and we bring it into an upscaler. It will use AI to then make it better quality, giving it more pixels essentially. So the website I'm using is Kive AI and this website allows you to upscale images and you can create a free account down below if you want to, to try this. So I've got my image here and I'm gonna press upscale resolution up here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring me here. I'm gonna just press default and it'll give me a sample prompt that's basically from this one. I'm just gonna press upscale. Now this can take a bit of time for Kive to do this, but it's well worth it because it makes the image quality even better. And also you can do it more than once. Once it's upscaled, you'll notice you'll get this bit here and it will essentially show you the before and after. This is before, this is after. It will make it sharper. It will make the image a bit better. Sometimes it goes a bit overboard. Remember, it's using AI to actually do this. So you won't get perfect results every time. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Photoshop Beta, which has got Firefly version three and a few other cool features in there. Now I'm gonna choose 70 by 100 centimeter document with 300 resolution. And I'm gonna drop my upscaled version of this image in like so. And if I zoom in to the 100%, you can see it has done pretty well. Now this is where AI gets crazy again. If I go ahead and just select here, hold shift and select down here and press generative fill, I don't have to write anything, just press generative fill. It will fill the, both of those sections out for me as well. Now that's very seamless and looks good, but there is a bit of a quality issue down here. You can see how it's different. So what we need to do is in our variations panel here, we have a new button we can press. It is just here. That essentially enhances the detail. It kind of upscales it slightly. So I'm gonna enhance this one. It will run through the enhanced detail progress. You can see there, run through it and it will give us a bit better detail in our picture. As you can see there, it's just slightly better. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do my normal thing. So for instance, I might want to create a curves adjustment here. So I'm just going to increase the contrast slightly, make it a bit brighter like so. I also wanna add a new gradient at the bottom, a white one coming up and another one coming from the top down as well, just so we have a white panel there. I'm gonna group these and lock it so I'm not messing around with it. And in fact, I might just bring that curve panel up again and just fix this little bit here. From here, I can create a different color of this by just adding a hue saturation. So I can just change the hue all the way around if I so desire. So I can change this to a nice dark blue and it looks pretty good. Kind of looks like that guy out of Monsters Inc. If I go to the blue, that's a nice blue. And that's basically how you get this effect. You type in what material you want and then you add that back into the AI. And then the AI uses your structure, which is your image that you've put in, whether that's a logo, whether that's lettering, and it will create this for you. Upscale it, put it into a poster. Now what's even more wild is Fireflies version three inside of Photoshop. 
I'm going to create a normal 1080 file here. And the first thing I get in Photoshop beta is this generate image. When I click this, we can generate now a whole image inside of Photoshop. So we don't need to bring any in. We get some sample prompts over here. This is a top view photo skincare bottle with a label with sun shining and seashells cosmetic mockups and lemons. I'm going to just add lemons too. We can also include a reference image. We can add effects to this. So we can go to hyper realistic again, and I'm going to press generate. And what this will do is it will generate an image inside of Photoshop that doesn't exist anywhere else using that prompt. This is where it gets wild. So remember I added lemons to this and we have two of these. Look at that. That is incredible. Look at the seashells and the lemons. It looks like a real image, but in fact, it actually looks like a mock-up. Now, this is where it gets really interesting for us designers. We've been worried for the past year about people being replaced, but here we can see AI really becoming a tool for graphic designers. We have a tool here to create mock-ups. I have a white label here. I have three versions to look at that I could give to a client and I've not had to pay really for any of these. And I can use it for client work because it's commercially safe for me to do so. And that's because of Adobe stock. What I'm trying to say through all of this excitement is that Adobe seem to be doing something a bit different with AI. They seem to be creating it as a tool to be used for designers. Designers need mock-ups. I've been saying this for ages. Use mock-ups for any presentation you create. Instead of having to go through the internet to find them, we can now generate them. And we can be so specific and it looks real. So we've got a coffee bag design mock-up here, but I'm gonna change this to a business card design. Business card design mock-up photo on a wooden table with a dark backdrop, rustic light and bokeh effect with lemons on the table, just to show you this. Let's go into hyper-realistic because I really like that. Okay, let's see what this creates. That is wild. There are now three mock-ups that have been generated for us here. To me, that has made it so much easier for me to create a business card. I'm gonna take my logo and I'm gonna just drop it in here. This is not how we have business cards for us, but it's a great example. Do a quick couple of effects, like add some dimension here. Boom, we have a mock-up that has never been created before. Why is there lemons in the background? I don't know, but it's just to show you how realistic they can look. This could be used in a client presentation and you are able to, and it's unique to that client. And it really does look like a mock-up as well. It's actually quite uncanny how good it is. I don't know what this means. All I know is that this tool here is amazing for us now, especially if you're doing branding or creating mock-ups. Let me know your thoughts down below of where it's going, how things are. And if you enjoyed this video, please press the subscribe button. And remember to check out my Skillshare original course down below. First 500 people get to have a free trial.